It is the 14th day of August 2016. And I'll be quite honest with you, I cannot remember dealing with a story that I know is more dangerous. I'm not one that likes to go to fireworks stands uh, and to play around with a blowtorch. I'm not one to go to a TNT explosives factory uh, and, uh, you know, run around uh, you know, firing automatic weapons into the storage lockers. I am not a person that plays with fire unless I absolutely have to do it to expose corruption and tyranny. As everyone knows, we covered the RNC in Cleveland for five days. And we've had a lot of Secret Service contacts, former Secret Service contacts on air uh, that have talked about the basic corruption of the government in general, but haven't actually gotten into what they saw inside the White House. Now, we've had a few authors on since then who were Secret Service agents previously, some of them senior, uh, who have gotten into some of the corruption that they personally witnessed because the stakes are so high. But the White House really is focused on trying to stop leaks because it's leaks that will basically bring their criminal operation to justice. Now, when we were in Cleveland, the Secret Service reached out to us and said, we appreciate what you guys are doing, trying to stop the murder of police and the overthrow of the country. Um, stand by for some information. Then the last week, through an intermediary, this law enforcement as well, we'll just stop right there, we were given that information. And now we understand why MSNBC, CNN, hundreds of publications conservatively have been out lying about us saying that we are the progenitors or, or the people that first gave birth the idea that Hillary has health problems. When she spent almost a year in the hospital in 2013, that was a big national story. Drudge talks about it constantly because it's credible. I'm not trying to dodge the credit. We just don't deserve it. You know, they've had the Daily Beast and CNN, MSNBC say, Paul Watson, Alex Jones is the source of the made-up conspiracy that Hillary's ill. Hillary's clearly having mild seizures when she's under flashing lights. Hillary's clearly having trouble walking. In fact, I forgot to print it. There was an article... From this weekend, just type the headline in, Hillary couldn't get up. And then she gave an interview and said, during the DNC, I was so tired that I couldn't get up. I mean, the point is, something's wrong with the lady. Well, the Secret Service has reached out to us and basically said, we think you're the folks that are best to put this out because you won't try to spin it. And we've got the scoop on Hillary's health issues, ladies and gentlemen, and the special things the Secret Service has to do for her uh, so that she doesn't basically fall down on her face in convulsions. Joe Biggs is part of this story with me. He's one of the folks involved in it. I'd leave, in fact, I offered to leave him out and others out, but he wants to be part of this, part of the risk. But I'll tell you, walking down the hall into this studio, I'm not a stupid person. And I know how dangerous this is, so please pray for us, and please pray for this republic, and please pray that the truth come out on every front. Uh, there are more criminal investigations of Hillary that have been started. Trump starting a nationwide movement to stop election fraud, and to get poll watchers, absolutely what we needed, just proving again this guy is the real deal. But I'm very honored, regardless of what happens in this fight, to be associated with the men and women in this nation, but also around the world, to see the threat that the Democratic Party and Republican Party establishment is, and who have gone through hell and high water to expose the globalist and support Donald Trump. I am really honored to be associated with all of you that see through the propaganda, that have strong wills, and who have their spirits pointed towards God. I wouldn't have this any other way, but this is going to be news making straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. It's not an issue of credibility. It's an issue of safety. But safety for individuals is outweighed by the needs of my children, your children, and everybody else's children to have a civilization in the future. It is quite frankly uh, with a heavy heart that I am forced to expose uh, inside information 
on Hillary Clinton's medical condition uh, for public interest and national security. I personally do not like to be the one to have to get in the arena with her machine. She may be faltering and, and, and basically uh, degenerating uh, into what will ultimately become her death in the future. Uh, but I do not seek to get in the arena uh, with the king tyrants uh, that back this witch. But we are, coming up the start of the next segment, going to get into Secret Service information leaked directly to Infowars.com. This started in Cleveland, and then as they said they would, they got the information to us so that it can't be tracked back to the individuals. But this is directly from the United States Secret Service. But you see they've been hyping up all these scandals against and demonizing uh, in, 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 in preparation for trying to intimidate the uh, agency into going along with the high treason taking place uh, in the Obama administration, but also in the Clinton Foundation and more. Secret Service told us they're giving us this information because they think that we will present it and will not spin it. And quite frankly, they didn't think anybody else would have the courage to do it. They said, you want it, you got it, and we are going to push it here in about 10 minutes out on air. Now, let's go to DrudgeReport.com right now. You notice we have the top link on the Internet you can get, Milwaukee Night of Shame. Go ahead and click that link. Infowars.com, boil down article by Paul Joseph Watson that has already had over a million plus readers today. And I bring that up to point out that we broke the MIAC secret Homeland Security report to go after veterans. We broke much of the Fast and Furious information. We broke the Benghazi info about it being an arms shipment program uh, out of the State Department with Hillary and her foundation. All of it started here. The Justice Department threatened to first imprison and then kill one of our witnesses and then proceeded to kill another one of our witnesses and then proceeded to threaten yours truly. So let's just get something straight here. We're not trying to win gold ribbons or blue ribbons about being men. But I want listeners to understand the proof's in the pudding. InfoWars doesn't make up jack crap. We have our own analysis of things you can call spin. Like I'm pro-Second Amendment and I argue points for it. But we tell the truth. And we're incredibly credible. And that's why we are now one of the fastest media, fastest growing media outlets in the world. It's why we're one of the dominant media outlets. Forget mainstream news. Uh, I mean, we have more listeners and viewers an hour, conservatively, than CNN's biggest shows. But so does a lot of other talk radio. It's a joke. MSNBC, CNN, all of it is just big, giant, $300 million uh, studios or more that they just sit there in pushing their garbage. But you have to understand that this is not pearls before swine, and when this information came through and was confirmed in the last few days, I called up Biggs, and I said, okay, we're getting ready to go with this, but I said, I'm going to keep you out of it, because this is dangerous. And he said, no, I, I, I want to be involved. I want to be in the danger with you. Uh, so I just want to say on record, no one else knows this information but Biggs and myself here at InfoWars, because there's no reason for them to take risk when they're not involved. This is not like WikiLeaks, who's all been proven to be accurate. Remember, they should deny that was accurate, which is just emails. And more of that's coming on Hillary. And, and Soros just got hacked, and the entire Democratic Party just got hacked by folks inside probably the U.S. government's our information. It's not the Russians. Russians have done that, too. The whole world, liberals like Julian Assange are scared of Hillary. Because this is a dangerous person. And the communist Chinese are behind her. The good news is the FBI... Defense Intelligence, the Secret Service, they're not perfect, nobody's perfect. This country's full of corrupt people and good people. But they understand Hillary is a communist Chinese agent. Gave them the missile secrets, the delivery systems, gave North Korea nuke reactors. I mean, she's really bad. She's the one giving the Russians one-fifth of our uranium. If Trump had done that, I'd say, no way, Trump. But see, that's how she does it. Oh, Trump, you're with the Russians over here. Meanwhile, she got one-fifth of our uranium transfer to the Russians. I'm not against the Russians either. The point is they're, they're for their interest. But you're an American citizen. You engage, in, in especially as someone elected who's sworn an oath, to screwing us over. It's called high treason. When you're at a high level of government and you're involved in that, it's high treason.
working with a foreign power. So even the New York Times admits all of this. I mean, this woman got $35 million herself to give the Russians one-fifth of our uranium. Treason doesn't even cover it. So we're reaching a spectacular moment where almost the entire military is awake. Most of the police are awake. They, should, they better be. I mean, Obama and George Soros and Hillary just financed hundreds of millions trying to cause a race war in this country. We are two minutes to midnight, people, and I'm not going to sit here at a critical juncture like this and wait for other people to bring this out. And that's also what the Secret Service told us. We're going to go through all this on the other side. They said big news is coming out soon because she's deteriorating and they can't cover it up anymore. So call your friends, your family, your neighbors, whoever. We're going to take this interview with Biggs coming up in this info, and we're going to punch it out. Tonight, before the show's even over at 6 o'clock Central, in an hour and 48 minutes, to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And Kit Daniels is going to write a basic article on it, and then Paul Watson will write a big one in the morning. But this is serious business. Very serious business. You know, I didn't jump the gun, and I didn't give sources, obviously, Two weeks ago, 15 days ago, two, two Saturdays ago, I went on air and I said, uh, Donald Trump needs to come out and expose election fraud. They're going to plan to steal the election in battleground states. I already knew that internal polling showed real scientific polling, where people really poll to actually know where they're at, showed Trump ahead like 12 points, 10 points, depending on which one in Florida, 7 to 10 points ahead in a battleground state, Pennsylvania. That, that means landslide. That hasn't happened since Reagan. Uh, dead heat in California, way ahead in Utah, Georgia. Does anyone believe Hillary's really ahead in Utah and Georgia of Donald Trump? I mean, this woman is one of the most unpopular people in history. Point is, there's inside polling going on 24-7. The Democrats know, everybody knows, Reuters and others have been caught adding 15% more Democrats to samples. So they interviewed 65% Democrats, 45%, I, I, I mean, th this is so obvious. They think we're complete and total morons. They think we're the biggest idiots in the world. 65% Democrats, 35% Republicans, and then wonder why she's 10 points ahead, and they admit they're doing it? I mean, it makes my head spin. That's just Reuters. Others are doing the same type of stuff. The fix is in. It, 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 they have pulled out all the stops. They are hysterical on every channel because they know Trump is going to have a mega massive landslide and they don't know how to steal one like that. They don't know what to do. I'm telling you, they could pull a false flag, start a war, set off a nuke. I mean, they are capable. The globalists conquered this country through fraud, through economic espionage. They've conquered most of Europe. They've conquered lots of the, uh, other areas of the world. England's pulling out of the Brexit saying it's an unelected tyranny. People are waking up. They are in panic mode in the Financial Times of London, in the Economist magazine, in the Washington Post saying world government's in trouble. Trump and the populists are killing us. It's Hillary or bust. And if they steal a nomination from Sanders, they'll do anything. So Trump's come out and said, that cheating is the only way he can lose Pennsylvania. It's because they got internal polls, folks, that are done to really give them scientific info. And even USA Today is admitting that major PR firms that actually do sampling off the Internet think Trump's going to win. Show to the big uh, social network systems. That came out last week, too. That's why they're freaking out. It is a massive repudiation of globalism, political correctness, all of it, and they're scared. So now Trump's launching an initiative to organize folks into poll watchers. We're going to break it all down straight ahead on Alex Jones. History is about to happen. Stay with us. It was a little more than three weeks ago that the Huffington Post, Time Magazine, you name it, were horrified to see us at the RNC with the most powerful red badges where we could go anywhere we wanted to. And that meant behind the Secret Service lines, you name it. It was just a big news story that InfoWars uh, was inside the RNC apparatus. And now we see the Republican Party establishment that, that Trump and the libertarian constitutionalist movement has defeated so far. Coming in and saying, don't give any of your money to Donald Trump, even though he's giving almost all the money, like he's supposed to by law, to Republican candidates. Donald Trump is the one raising money for the Republican Party right now. So the whole establishment is against him. Well, it was at the 
RNC three and a half weeks ago is when it kicked off, that Joe Biggs and I uh, and others were able to talk to the Secret Service quite a bit off record. And we were told that in the next month or so, um, get ready for some very powerful information concerning Hillary Clinton. And we said, more leaks, more emails? And they said, uh, no, dealing with her health. And I said, okay, I'm not going to handle this. Uh, Joe Biggs was there. Uh, Joe wanted to handle it. Um, a lot of people are former military and police and things like that. We'll just stop there. And I said, you handle it. And sure enough, in the last few days, the contact came through. They said, would come to us. This is not done over phones. This is not done. This is all done in person. And this individual came to Austin, met with Biggs, and this is from the Secret Service of the United States. And they said they're doing this because of national security interest, and, and, and basically the public has a right to know. So, Joe, uh, obviously, w w we've seen MSNBC, CNN demonize us. Uh, for even daring to raise this, but we're not the ones raising it. She was in the hospital for almost a year in 2013, 2012. She admittedly had all these blood clots. She's falling down. She's stumbling. She's acting like she's having these mini seizures. And then uh, basically a lot of other things are happening. But we have info on the preparations that have been made for her, what's going on, and the fact that the Secret Service told you and told us, get ready uh, they're going to have to make some announcements soon. So, Joe, let's be very careful. Let's walk word through word uh, exactly what you were told. So, yes, from the source that I was contacted by in the Secret Service, this gentleman came out and said that they know that Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease. Now, think about that. That makes a lot of sense. The fact that she's had multiple concussions. We've seen the seizure-like uh, symptoms from her where she starts uncontrollably twitching. And... That could lead her to fall, which could give her those concussions, which has also led to the blood clots and so forth and so on. So it makes a lot of sense to see how this is starting to unfold. Now, what I was told is they, you know, that she has Parkinson's, and on top of that, there's over, there's been over a quarter of a million dollars done to the vehicles that transport her to add an extra step or whatever to help her because she has trouble. Be specific, a little handicap system yes. that lowers down that she steps on and rises up. Yes to help her out because she has trouble climbing stairs. And we've been calling this. We've been talking about this. Paul Joseph Watton's written about it. You've talked about it. And people say, oh, this is just made up. No, no. This is coming from the Secret Service inside. And let's not forget, we've got all these neurologists like Ben Carson and others uh, coming out, even the Fox medical team, and saying she shows signs of neurological disorder. Dr. Steve Pachenik, mm -hmm. uh, who, who ran a whole medical facility, says she's clearly got some type of neurological problem. Why not just release the full medical records? Exactly. And the other thing that the uh, the source came out and said as well is, is one of the main reasons she probably hasn't been giving this many press conferences is due to the fact that from these Parkinson's that, that she has, from these seizures she's been having, it's being caused by flashes. So when she stands in front of people, you see that one video where she uncontrollably just starts, you know, bobbling her head. Well, they specifically said, because we have the list here, epileptic type events, but also Parkinson's, which is causing her to fall down, causing more uh, head traumas, because reportedly the strokes are getting closer and closer. Let's get into that. And I think a big event's coming. They're going to have to announce it soon. Well, the Secret Service said that they're scared, but because if any kind of flash or strobe light is used around here, it sets off a seizure. So that is why they wanted to tell us, they want to make this known, they want to give this to us exclusively to have this kind of information to put it out because they know most news sources are going to be too scared to even go on record to release this kind well, of Well, most news sources, the email show from WikiLeaks just, that just came out a month ago, and then the guy that reportedly, maybe the source that released him, ended up getting shot four times in the back. And, and of course, that's being investigated right now. It shows right there she was giving orders to hundreds of media outlets of exactly what to say. Debbie Washerman Schultz was. Yeah. I mean, look at what's going on. She's in contact with George Soros. People have been dying that have been trying to release stuff about it. This is a dangerous thing to right. deal the with. Soros is right now are meeting with the Clintons and meeting with others. Now, now, now they told us more. Let's let's walk through everything word for word they told us. Let's start at the beginning, Joe, and repeat everything because let's let, let's get it all out there. All right, so the Secret Service contacted me. They said that Hillary Clinton has Parkinson's disease. They've spent over a quarter of a million dollars on these stairs that go down from the vehicles to allow her to be able to step down uh, from the vehicle to the ground because she has trouble walking. They said that any kind of flashes or strobes will set her off into a seizure, and that's why they wanted to come to us. They wanted to contact us and get us this information because they knew we would be able to get this out. We wouldn't be scared to do it, and, you know, 
it really makes a lot of sense when you watch all these videos. The fact that she's refusing to go do all these different uh, news. It had been a year since she did a press conference, and the one she did, she seemed completely addled. Yeah. We need to go question the press, because we know this is right from the Secret Service. But I noticed at her press conferences, where are the flashes? You, you don't really see those like you do at a Trump event where they're everywhere, which we know cause of folks with epileptic-type disorders. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just WebMD to go into these convulsions. Yep. I, I mean, we could go to another event and see. We could try to go in with a flash or a strobe of some sort and see if we can get in. If they say, no, you can't bring that in, but then I can bring it into a Trump rally. Well, then we Exactly. Know. We need to go to more of a rally with a big flash and say, yep. oh, we're here to take photos. Oh, no, you can't. Because I remember not seeing those. Yeah, it's really odd. It's really odd because, like you said, when you go to a Trump rally, you see flashes everywhere. It's like he's in a sports arena, like he's some well, superstar. Well, let's expand on this then. I don't want to give away too much, but, I mean, this, this is directly from the Secret Service where we were told, get ready, we're going to get you something in the near future. Uh, this individual is going to be contacting you, and then, sure enough, that happened. Uh, so this has all been done, like Matt Drudge says, you got to meet in a parking garage now, mm -hmm. like, like, like Deep Throat, if you want to do this. Uh, remember Matt Drudge uh, exposed Monica Lewinsky, and for months they said it was a conspiracy theory. Uh, well, this is not a conspiracy theory. We, we have broken the MIAC report. When Homeland Security said they were going to go after veterans and gun owners and nobody believed it, we got that from the federal marshals and others. And then when folks didn't believe that, state police gave me a similar document, and it was confirmed to be real. Uh, we've broken the Benghazi information. I mean, mm -hmm. fast and furious. We have been at the tip of the spear on so many big issues, and that's why the mainstream media wants to act like they're the only ones that will cover news. No, they're the ones that won't cover news, like them saying there's no election fraud in our history or saying you know, uh, that uh, Hillary didn't steal the nomination from Sanders. Well, everybody knows that's not true. So I really think we've reached a point where they're in crisis. Um, other points, Joe Biggs. It's coming down to the wire. Her health is fading very fast. And it kind of makes you wonder what's going to happen if they're really trying to lift her up. I mean, it's almost like this is the weekend of Bernie's. They're doing everything to hold her up. You see these guys walking alongside of her, injecting her with different stuff just to keep Everywhere her going. Everywhere she, she's walking with governors, they, they've been told, and they're right by her, ready to grab her. Just just to keep her going, uh, just a little bit longer, a little bit more, a little bit. Like, what are they trying to do? It's so confusing to try to find out why they're trying to push her so far. I agree. Let's stay there. I want to come back and talk about where you think we go from here. Stay with us. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central. We're here live. We'll back tomorrow, Lord willing, 11 a.m. Central. And then Sundays, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. We're 33 minutes, 45 seconds into this worldwide broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us. This is a particularly jam-packed Sunday show. It's important that everybody be aware of each piece of the transmission. Next segment, I filed a special report that I shot yesterday. I'm working seven days a week right now. This is so important. Our republic's on a knife's edge. To go either way. On the UN admitting it's brought in 5 million Muslims, most of them military age men, to overthrow Europe. They actually admit it, even in mainstream news. That is coming up in the next segment. Then I have a breakdown of Donald Trump clips where he's come out and said they're involved in election fraud. We're doing in internal polling. It doesn't match up with what they're saying. Uh, we need poll watchers nationwide, especially in battleground states. We've got somebody now ready to battle this fraud. This is a big deal. We've got uh, Hillary, it turns out, 98% of her charitable contributions were to herself and her own foundation. Uh, we've got uh, just all these new hacks of Soros and Hillary. As the world fights back against what they see as Hitler, I mean, the whole world is just like liberal groups, you name it, are like freaking out. Because when they get in their emails, they see pure evil. So that is all coming up. Uh, we also have a very powerful Second Amendment piece where it shows Charlton Heston, myself, and many others saying from my cold, dead hands, if they try to repeal the Second Amendment, you can't. We have the right to defend ourselves. And that's all Trump said a few weeks ago. I think he said it kind of watered down. They're acting like it's the end of the world because they admit they're coming for the guns. They want to legitimize that. From the Washington Post to the New York Times to Rolling Stone, they say it's now time to repeal the Second Amendment. Remember, they always denied that. So we're two minutes to midnight. They're making their move. This is a jam-packed transmission. I've been up here basically most of the weekend uh, because it's such a critical time. And other parts of the world are trying to pull out of the new world order and globalism, this unelected corporate system. Now, Joe Biggs, um, finishing up, we were there. 
I, I try not to even videotape it when we go through checkpoints. The Secret Service would share us uh, because they know we're awake to what's happening. Um, I'm not going to get into what happened inside the convention center, but it was surreal. Because these people are freaked out by what they've seen behind the scenes with Hillary. I mean, she treats everybody like crap. That's been admitted. She does horrible things. They stole the cutlery and, and, and George Washington's plates. And they, they sold the Lincoln bedroom. I mean, they just, they are trash. And Joe, recapping, because you say you've gone over everything and I'm going to go over everything. But the big issue is they said there's a big announcement coming. She's deteriorating quickly. Uh, we believe it's Parkinson's, but they won't say what it is. Let's be clear. The Secret Service doesn't know. They just say she's followed by medical doctors with these tranquilizer pens for convulsions. She, she has to be helped into vehicles. They've put in basically handicap access for her, to be specific, and they're really concerned. Uh, re 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 recap Joe Biggs. Right, so we, back at the RNC, we actually met with a couple of individuals. This one guy reached out. Uh, really thought that we would be a good source for this said he had some information uh about hillary clinton so we vetted who they were exactly and uh it, it took a few weeks but like they said they would get a hold of us when the time came to get us this information and what we were told is they believe that she has parkinson's disease she has uh trouble with a lot of stuff she's falling down in fact they said more and more yes and, and it was asked how much and they said well there's different units there are different groups on on detail but it's it's bad miss at a point where they have to have quarter of a million dollars uh, of upgrades done to any kind of vehicle that she's going to be traveling in whatsoever to be able to give her that extra bit of help because we've seen multiple pictures with hillary clinton where people are helping her up dragging her almost like weekend at bernie's uh just to get her up to the podium and then you see her kind of have these conniption fits where it's like a grand mal seizure or some kind of seizure epileptic seizure where you see her just her lower head going back and forth like a bobblehead and what we were told is a lot of this is being caused from flashes and strobe lights, which is why she's probably not been doing any kind of press conferences or anything to that nature. And by the way, Julius Caesar had this as well. I was trying to cover it up. Yeah. So this, uh, this has happened a lot historically. Well, I mean, here's the deal. We have this information. Uh, we're putting it out. It fits in with all the other information we've seen. This is unprecedented. The Secret Service... Covered up for FDR. They covered up for Kennedy's broken back. Uh, you know, his back was repaired, but he was still in great pain. They covered up for some stuff with Reagan when he started getting a little Alzheimer's towards the end. They covered up for Nixon and his pill popping. It, what does it tell you about Hillary that they're, they're willing to expose her? I mean, how long are they going to have to hold her up? She can't do this job on her own. This is it's not like she's in there. I get it. She's not in yet. So if she was elected, that'd be one issue. She's not yet. They're warning people. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing, though. Is she a distraction away from something even bigger to take a distraction away from something else that's going on? Because if her health is deteriorating, deteriorating just like this, and there's probably a good chance she's not going to be able to stand up on her own soon, do we need to be looking at Kane more? Do we need to be looking at Obama's? Or All I know is term? I can't believe what cowards the mainstream media are because I openly said to folks, I said, listen, I'm not stupid. Okay, we got the courage. You mean we're dumb enough to put this out? Okay, only reason I'm going to put it out is that there's evidence that's going on, and I don't think you're bad people. But let me guess, you've probably talked to other folks. And we were told, no, we don't trust other people. So I guess they know how backstabbing the mainstream media is. I've got sources in Joint Special Operations Command, uh, SOCOM, uh, all kinds of different places. The people reach out to us for information all the time, and it always comes out to be true. The fact that you were talking about how there was a... Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia involvement with 9-11 and no one believed you forever until earlier this year when they came out and said that there was an involvement with those guys and now families are trying to sue Saudi Arabia. Well, sure, we, we had that from the FBI right when it happened. We yeah. break tons of information. So this is serious. When people like that reach out to us and give us this information, it's because they trust us. It's because they know we're going to handle this the right way. We're not going to be cowardly. We're true Americans. We're going to get this out and we're going to break it and make, we're going to force the mainstream media to talk about that. That's right. They've called Trump the kamikaze uh, candidate. He's exposing election fraud, open borders, globalism, the fraud of the media. He said today, I'm running against the mainstream media. He is. And so, hey, he's kamikaze -ing. We got to just do the right thing, brother. And I appreciate your courage, Joe. Thank you, Alex. Really do. All right, great job. You and Kit work on this story. I appreciate you guys up here on Sunday night. And Paul Watson's going to obviously uh, do a big report tomorrow. Thank you, Joe Biggs. Yep.
And thanks to the rest of the crew and you, the viewers out there. Uh, it, it's a great responsibility to have to do this. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I have seen a lot of dirty tricks behind the scenes uh, in, in the last few years. And they've not been coming from Obama. It's always from the Clintons just in preparation for their reign of terror that's coming. And I was on air back in the 90s when they were in power, and I was told, you're being fired for talking about, about the Clintons. And I said, is this from the Clintons? And they said, yeah, you bet it is. They were on a power trip. Shamrock Communications, uh, which is an East Coast firm. They gave me six weeks to stop doing it. Of course, I just went and got syndicated somewhere else. Uh, I, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you that was for just exposing Waco and 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 you know having Larry Nichols and people on and, and talking about Monica Lewinsky. Can you imagine what they think right now about this? I mean, the, all the major media outlets attack us almost every day and say lies about us. CNN, MSNBC. I'm just saying I need your prayers because my kids are counting on me, and I'm not complaining. I, I just I feel really good doing this. I feel good in my gut, and my soul, but there's also kind of like a heaviness, like man, why do you got to do this? And that's kind of a little bit of coward. I mean, I just back slap that guy right up against the wall and say, you know what? You sit right over there in the corner. We're doing this. Uh, but you know, Hillary's obviously very, very ill. If you want to support us, we have a lot of specials that are uh, ending today. Uh, the Off the Grid special, half off on colloidal silver. Uh, we also have 23% off the different uh, recharge uh, jumper cable packs that are really miniaturized, the best units out there. 40% uh, off Anthroplex. Uh, there's also some free shipping on some different items there as well. Uh, there's also a lot of other great uh, products on the side. Hillary for prison shirts, uh, Bill Clinton rape shirts. All to spread the word and practice the First Amendment in a bold way. Infowarsstore.com or Infowarslife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. What I really want is for you to pray for us, but also I don't want this work to be for granted. Spread the links to our articles and videos in this live show to everyone you know or tell folks about the local station you're listening to right now. Special report coming up. It's key. Humanity is fighting back against the technocrats. If you wonder why George Soros comes out and tells CNN, yeah, I spent billions to overthrow Ukraine and start a war with Russia, or if you wonder why Barbara Boxer admits she wants to ban your guns, or you wonder why they're so arrogant about it, why George Soros admits he funded Black Lives Matter and this whole destabilization that we're going to be covering next hour, it's the top of DrudgeReport.com, what's happening in Milwaukee and more. It's because it's all about being over the top in your face. It's all about just acting normal so that no one realizes what they're doing is criminal. They're flaunting it. They're normalizing it. They're breaking your will. And Donald Trump has come out and said, I'm not running against Hillary. I'm running against the mainstream media. Here's that clip. Thousands murdered by Islamists. Priests beheaded. Children run over while watching fireworks displays. And the state-run media tells the public it's not Islamic. For more than a thousand years, Europe has battled Islamic invasions. But in the 21st century, Europe and the rest of the Western world faces a new type of war. Powerful central banks, the United Nations, the military-industrial complex, combining forces with jihadist Islam to finally bring down Europe. We are witnessing World War III. It doesn't look like past wars. It's a stealth war conducted by traitors from within. More times than I can even remember. I'll be on an international television program or a local radio show or sitting down to do a magazine interview. And the reporter will look at me and say, oh, if there's this big secret world government, where is it? Tell us who runs it. And I look at him and I say, it's not secret who runs the TPP. It's not secret who runs the IMF and World Bank. It's not secret who runs the UN. It's the programs and operations of these institutions that are secret, quasi-secret, and that claim diplomatic immunity or state immunity. In modern parlance, this is the new royalty. Every time you get to the bottom of who is funding, disarming populations around the world, it's Goldman Sachs. Every time you get to the bottom of who's opening up borders and destroying sovereignty, 
it's Goldman Sachs. Every time you find out who's financing all this anti-family, anti-fatherhood propaganda, it's Goldman Sachs, followed by J.P. Morgan and others behind him. And so it's not any surprise that the head of the U.N. migrant program, who was the founder of the European Union, but now who runs the immigration, the invasion of third world populations. It wasn't any surprise that Peter Sutherland, the chairman of Goldman Sachs globally, openly said that he wants to use third world populations to undermine national homogeneity. And it doesn't stop there with Goldman Sachs. They have been installing their former vice presidents and directors as the presidents and prime ministers of places like Greece and Italy. And they call it technocracy, not dictatorship. Goldman Sachs is literally the devil. It is the top of the pyramid. It is the scourge. It's like the Nazis we fought in World War II. It is the progenitor of all of the crises we face coming out of the new world order. But the anti-white racist garbage is only the cover. The elite want to destroy the free market system and the basic freedoms and liberties that the West has promoted. That's why it's been allied with orthodox radical Islam for a very long time. And now we're witnessing true 21st century warfare. So it doesn't come as any surprise to discover that the chairman of Goldman Sachs, Peter Sutherland, who formerly ran the UN program on global governance, who is the founder of the European Union, took a demotion a few years ago to head up the United Nations Migrant Council. This is the weapon that he admits in major interviews they plan to use to, quote, undermine national sovereignty and homogeneity. Now, you talk about racist towards Western culture and white people. This is the idea that because there are countries that are indigenous to white people, they must be undermined. And they don't argue that they should bring in, say, northern Anuits, or that they should bring in people from Brazil, for that matter. No. Or folks from Asia. They argue that you bring in the incredibly barbarous Stone Age populations that still have slavery in North Africa and the Middle East and other areas. And it was Peter Sutherland four years ago that advertised migrants to come to Europe and worked with Turkey to open up migration routes through Syria and other areas into Europe. Then Merkel advertises to the world that you should come to Germany. Hollande advertises, come to Germany and you'll get three hot meals and a roof over your head and a job. Now, it was over a year ago that we began to see local newspaper articles in Germany reporting on them throwing elderly Germans out of their homes in Section 8 housing and moving the invaders in, 80% of which are military-age men. And we knew, following the UN program, this was next. France wants members of the public to take in immigrants as official centers can't cope. They have hundreds of these centers and are building more. But because they're advertising for millions more to come, five million have already come the last three years, they're telling the citizens, you need to take them into your home. And now they're saying, we may even charge you tax money if you don't take them into your home, if you don't take jihadist Muslims into your home. This is the designed collapse of Europe, bringing in uncompatible, outside, Sharia law, radical Wahhabist. And the same week that France announced that the French better let the invaders into their homes, the Germans came out and are meeting with leaders of German industry, even talking about tax cuts for them, but only when they hire the Muslim invaders out of North Africa or out of the Middle East or Central Asia. And Reuters and the Associated Press all report it like it's a wonderful good thing. This is social engineering in the UN's own words to bring down Europe. Bringing in unskilled, in many cases diseased, Islamicists who are culturally diseased with their incredibly oppressive 
political and religious system. That way the governments have cheap laborers who can be clients of the state, who can then be made to be constabulary, they're already hiring them to be police, uh, police chiefs, you name it, to then bully the former indigenous population into submission while the German, French, and other governments play referee over them. That's why from Sweden to Germany, the police have been ordered to cover up migrant rapes and more. The French and German governments have basically declared martial law or civil emergencies and are putting troops on the streets to suppress citizens that criticize the central government's traitorous activity. France has declared emergencies on their highways as commerce grinds to a halt. Buses are firebombed. There are robberies by the hundreds every single day because open season has been declared by the EU member states to help destroy national sovereignty. Make no mistake, this is only a beta test for the rest of the world. The UN's secret weapon is billions of desperate, starving people. The problem is most third world populations when they come to the West are actually happy to be part of the free market system and don't want to burn down cities and rape women. But the EU and the UN do have over a billion Muslims and many of them are ready to take action. Many of them are ready to loot and it just so happens they're right next door. If you take away anything from this special report, understand this. We're not witnessing misguided, bleeding heart, liberal policies. This is an admitted program to overthrow the West. This is an admitted program to bring in barbaric cultures that destroy the basic tenets of classical liberalism. And who better to carry it out than globalist corporate henchmen and women like Merkel and Hollande who have the mantle of being liberals. You have been warned. And the attacks happening in Europe are only the beginning of what we're going to see here in the United States as well. All right, that report is up on Infowars.com. I suggest everyone spread it to the four winds. It is red linked. The UN admits its plan to overthrow the West. I mean, we've got mainstream BBC news articles where they're saying it like it's good. They just hide the thing in plain view. Coming up. Trump is battling back, just like Nigel Farage of UKIP in the UK, exposing the fraud and the plan to steal the election. And we have the proof. History continues to happen when we start the second hour. Call everyone you know and tell them, tune in now. I can tell the communist Chinese and Goldman Sachs, George Soros type something. I hope you feel good and insulated up there in your little... Connecticut mansions because you have taken America's restraint for weakness you've taken our kindness for weakness and if you saw the things I saw at the RNC and if you saw the things I've seen elsewhere you would not be playing games with the US military and other groups right now that's not a threat everybody knows I'm not the guy that gets up here and acts tough and everything I'm not the guy that tries to call for violence I don't want that um, if I talk to talk, I walk the walk. But I'll tell you one thing, the New World Order better be watching its ass. Because not just here, but all over the world, people don't like being run by foreign corporations. They don't like being conquered by foreign groups. They don't like being treated like they're dumb. They don't like seeing their kids treated like crap either. And they don't like seeing the media try to create all sorts of weird division and create race wars. Now, let's go to DrudgeReport.com. It's the top story there, at least it was 10 minutes ago. And Drudge has got the most uh, expansive coverage of it. If you go up to the uh, right-hand corner there of DrudgeReport.com, it goes over all of this. InfoWars has great coverage as well, but I think Drudge is even more extensive specifically uh, on this subject. It's not loading for me. I just, I just had it and just hit refresh, and it's messed up here on my computer. Probably getting too much traffic or something. But... Uh, Drudge goes over a bunch of these different different headlines where you've got people that we have on video saying, we're not making enough money, let's go kill white people or let's attack white people. I mean, I, I'm not exaggerating. I got up at about 6.30 this morning, went and got a cup of coffee, started cooking some eggs and sausage on the uh, stove and got my iPad out and went to Drudge and was like, oh, my God. Milwaukee was burning last night. Oh, boy. 
Then, I, oh, there's an InfoWars story. About a couple hours later, Paul Watson's. And it's just surreal. It was. I sat there and watched like 15 videos of just the most racist, mindless garbage and just innocent white people being drug out of cars and beaten up. And then I, I didn't even play it because I'm not even wanting to demonize people. I mean, it's not that I censored it. I just, I just kind of self-censored, I realized. In Ferguson last week, a black lady is being blocked in traffic by Black Lives Matter. She barely bumps a vehicle and bumps some people that are in her way. So they unload into her car. Do you imagine if a white mob would have unloaded into a black lady's car? Or if guys with Mexican flags were, you know, you know beating up a, a white lady, it's okay. But the other way around, it's not. And the point is, is this is all just dumbed down people. You can find every race, color, and creed being pushed into all this by the media. And, and, and again, I'd play these clips on radio, but I got to be honest, we've got a skeleton crew of four people up here on Sunday, including a writer. I guess five people right now. We can't go through and beat 15 videos that have got every third word is a cuss word. I'm not, I mean, I mean, you know how folks speak nowadays. I don't care if they're white trash or black trash or whatever. They just, every other word is cuss words. And it is mind-blowing to hear all this. And let's get some more white people. Let's get them. Let's attack them. Blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And then you go read, and, and they've got black witnesses on tape going, yeah, this guy, convicted felon with a gun, gets out and is waving at the cops, so they shoot him. Like I said, more black people get struck by lightning and killed every year than killed by police. And I'm sure cops, there's some bad cops. I'm sure they do bad stuff sometimes. Fry them. But, man, it's not the main story in the country. And George Soros, a freaking Nazi collaborator, is the one financing it all. I mean, this is crazy. Police shooting of armed man waving gun sparks violent protests in Wisconsin. Businesses set on fire. Crowd chases reporters. Rich got all this money and ain't trying give none about to steal this cracker's car they've taught class warfare to poor people across this country they don't get that having some wealthy people around means they're going to build stuff they're going to want services that that's going to spread wealth they think the poorer the area is the better because misery loves company that transcends race color creed historically nothing succeeds like success nothing fails uh, like feeling sorry for yourself, but now we have the crony capitalists that are anti-free market wanting to consolidate control allied worldwide with poor populations. Milwaukee's night of shame. Whites hunted for beatdowns. Walker sends in National Guard. So all hell is breaking loose right now, ladies and gentlemen. And DrudgeReport.com, I have to say, has the best on time, by the minute it's updating, coverage. InfoWars has a lot of it as well. We've got two people on staff today at InfoWars. we got two people on staff at Drudge, but Drudge is just kicking butt there. I'm just pointing out that's the best place to get all the coverage on that. I want to get back into that for the next few segments and then get into Trump's incredible stand for free and open elections in this country. The media spins that he's a sore loser. Oh, like when he was winning 78% in different states and they told him he was going to lose and he said, no, I'm not. You're not going to steal it. They had to back off. Donald Trump is amazing. And I want to just say this to all of you before I get to this other news item. I want to salute all of you, no matter what color your skin is or where you're from or what your religion is or lack thereof, that have had the courage and, 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 and the gut instinct, but also the intellectual acumen to know that Donald Trump's the real deal. I mean, it was hard to do a year and a half ago, but now with the whole political system against him, foreign leaders, the Pope, the Mexican president, the Chinese president, all these mass murderers, all these criminals, all these multinational corporations, the Republican Party establishment, everybody we hate, from Karl Rove to George Herbert Walker Bush to just you name it, and the Democratic Party and all the cheating and Google and Facebook all trying to scam it and all their lies. I mean, wow, we were right about Donald Trump. He is the man with the plan. And 
<laughs> Mainstream media, dying dinosaur media from CNN to MSNBC to ABC this week. I'm not going to play these clips. Most talk show hosts, even Limbaugh, and I'm not against Limbaugh, but he'd play clips of media talking about it. We don't even do it 90% of the time. I'm not going to sit here and play clips of them crapping their little britches uh, over the fact that I say one thing and then Trump says it two days later. Let me give you a little news flash. Trump sees what's going on. He doesn't need to get it from me. He's got internal polls. He's know, he knows he's ahead in all these battleground states. And then he sees these polls where they take 15% more samples. A bunch of companies are doing it to put Hillary over the top. See, used to polling agencies didn't want to completely discredit themselves, so they do different scams for clients. But they all got together. It's clear. I mean, they had, suddenly at least six companies I know of are giving Hillary a 10 to 15 point lead by sampling more Democrats than Republicans. So, I mean, they're just literally destroying their industry like mainstream media has done to themselves in an attempt to put in crooked Hillary. This is epic. So that special report's coming up. But first, I don't know what headline to come up with on this because headlines are half the battle. Donald Trump proven right on Second Amendment statement? Or is this the Second Amendment statement the media hopes you don't look at? Because it's such an epic clip. This happened over a week ago. It's the number one news story in the country, still. That Donald Trump said, well, that she's going to appoint three or four Supreme Court judges. And then they're going to take your guns. What do you do then? I mean, I guess some Second Amendment folks might want to do something else. That was actually a watered down, somewhat milk toast. Um, and in fact, if I have a beef with Trump, it's that. Second Amendment defense. Everyone has said since 1775, you come to take our guns, war starts. I've said it on national TV. The former head of the NRA has said it. Charlton Heston, Wayne LaPierre has said it. Congressmen have said it. It is a cliche that, well, of all those fails, we got the Second Amendment. It's in the Declaration of Independence, our right and duty to overthrow a tyranny. We're trying to do it peacefully. So they are flipping out. All over the news, saying he went too far, calling for Hillary's assassination. We have Joe Biden, we're going to play the clip, when he was running mate with Obama, saying if he tries to take my shotgun or my Beretta, my, my, my shotgun or my handgun, I'm going to shoot him because I got two of them. You know, I'm going to go after Obama. He basically says, I got it, he's going to have a problem. We got Hillary saying Obama isn't going to win in 2008, the primary, because you saw what happened to Bobby Kennedy. Now, those are clear threats. He just says, if she tries to take all the guns, you know, once she gets into office and the, and, and, the, and the courts say your guns are banned, I guess you'll have to only have a Second Amendment. That's a fact what he said. But they didn't make a big deal about it when Charlton Heston said it or I said it. They said it about Trump because now they admit they want to ban guns. In countless publications from Rolling Stone to the New York Times, you've seen it, time to repeal the Second Amendment. At least they're being honest about it. So here is... Donald Trump telling it like it is and being demonized and then basically everybody else making the same statement. They want to make you feel dirty about saying there's some line in the sand when Santa Ana comes to take the guns or King George III does that you're not going to lay down, that there's some point at which you'll stand up. Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish the Second Amendment. By the way, and if she gets to pick, if she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. From my cold, dead hands. Anybody that wants to make me unarmed and helpless, people that want to literally create the proven places where more innocents are killed called gun-free zones we're gonna beat you this we're gonna vote you out of office yes. or suck in my machine yes. that's why you're going to fail and the establishment knows no matter how much propaganda the republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns i've had enough let me explain something to the new world order okay you're not getting our guns 1776 started when you tried to get them you bastards and as charlton heston famously said from my cold dead hand you sons of bitches 
You got that? You're not getting our firearms. Do you understand? This far and no further with your damn dictatorship. I'm sick of it. You know, the right to bear arms is because that's the last form of defense against tyranny. To say we're not turning our guns in and we're not running and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. I must tell you, the right to defend yourself, the right to keep and bear arms, does not protect your right to shoot deer. It protects your right to shoot at the government when it is taken over by tyrants. These are... <laughs> the quintessential American right. The right to be left alone. Now, in completion. That's the clip they don't want you to see. All Trump is saying is pure Americana. Just classic America, and they're rejecting pure Americana like lower taxes and things like it's evil. And here's Joe Biden in 2008, VP running mate of Obama, saying if Obama comes after his Beretta, he's going to have a problem 50 times more extreme than what Trump said. I guarantee you, Barack Obama ain't taking my shotguns, so don't buy that malarkey. Don't buy that malarkey. They're going to they're gonna start peddling that to you. I got two. If he tries to fool my Beretta, he's got a problem. I like that little over and under. You know, I'm not bad with it. And now he's coming for our guns, admitting he wants to ban them. So now you see if you're a new viewer or a new listener, because here's the issue. They've got everything compartmentalized. Patriots, people that are awake, we're awake. you got to realize, though, the general public raised in their crap-filled diapers in front of TV, they don't know they're headed from a hole in the ground. I was watching Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark, who's been a frequent guest and a patriot, up there as Milwaukee burns and as white people are attacked all over the different areas of the city and he's just shaking his head it's like there's witnesses that a guy's waving a gun threatening to kill police he's he's a, a convicted robber and then he's killed so people run around burning things that's coming up that would have been our top story today obviously but there's all this hillary news from the secret service that we covered earlier if you missed it there's all these attacks on the second amendment but i i was sitting there this morning and this afternoon watching different clips of the black lives matter leaders and people that are there and it's like cartoon it's like a joke Black Lives Matter supporter. Rich people don't give us enough money, so we burn down our neighborhoods. That's actually a quote. And I'm like, they don't give us money, so we hit ourselves in the head with a hammer. And it's just this total entitlement culture where people don't want to get good grades. They don't want to try to get a job. Rich got all this money, and they ain't trying to give none. I'm quoting, about to steal this cracker's car. And just last week, we've got the video of Ferguson. I'm going to play it later. They're just blocking a road, and a woman barely bumps a guy. She just pulls a gun out and starts shooting her, and she's a black woman. Of course, she never heard about it because she's a black lady, so who cares? Because black lives don't matter when another black person kills them. 550-something plus. That was a few weeks ago. In the first eight months of this year in Chicago, black-on-black -black deaths. 2,400 and something shootings, two plus thousand are black on black. You're not going to hear jack crap about that. And here's the thing, I actually care about those people. But I, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just crazy that we're allowing multinational glo globalist organizations to have us all fighting with each other while multinational companies screw this whole country over and ship our jobs overseas, and we're busy having riots all over the country for four or five years running when more black people die every year from being struck by lightning than killed by cops. I mean, I'm not defending excesses of police. God knows it goes on, but it's just statistically not even on the radar screen. I'm going to stop right there. Speaking of uh, Hillary Clinton, Trump claims cheating is the only way she can lose. Uh, he can lose Pennsylvania. We're getting into that. Soros has been hacked. Hundreds of documents leaked. The entire Democratic Party has been hacked. Report 96% uh, of Hillary's charitable giving goes to her own foundation, to herself, her money laundering organization. 
But before we uh, get to all of that, I wanted to play a great NRA ad for radio listeners. I'll narrate it for you visually, uh, where it shows Hillary or an actress getting on a plane that looks like Hillary. And uh, you'll see clips of herself on the news talking about uh, disarming the American people because she's got bodyguards, but she wants to be able to take your guns. Here's the clip. She's one of the wealthiest women in politics. Combined income, $30 million. Tours the world on private jets. Protected by armed guards for 30 years. But she doesn't believe in your right to keep a gun at home for self-defense. I fully appreciate how hard life is for so many Americans today. An out-of-touch hypocrite. She'd leave you defenseless. The NRA Political Victory Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. An out-of-touch hypocrite. It's beyond being a hypocrite. She wants you disarmed. She can have your way. So she can do whatever she wants to you. And I, for one, am totally sick of it. And all these true liberal organizations like WikiLeaks and everybody else are hacking the DNC. By the way, Julian Assange has admitted they've gotten into the Republicans. They've gotten into Trump. Truth is, it's very easy to do. There's nothing there. And what they find in Hillary's system is so scary. They are they are risking their lives to tell you what's going on. And I can tell you that, yes, the WikiLeaks information will deal with Hillary directly ordering State Department officials to stand down and to allow the shipments of arms to Al-Qaeda, which they renamed ISIS. And uh, Assange believes that'll bring her down. That's why Trump is coming out saying she's the founder of ISIS, along with Obama. But... The mainstream media is not all powerful, but they're still able to divert the attention because some of their supporters are that stupid. I've had some people that I've known for 10 years come up to me, one in a uh, gas station yesterday. No, no, two days ago. It was two days ago. Time flies. And say, Alex, I'm really ashamed of you supporting Trump. And I was looking at this guy and I went, excuse me? You remember me? And I said, yeah, I've seen you at some rallies and stuff. Well, you know, he's a rich guy. And I said, since when are you a class warfare person? He, he wants us to have better trade deals. We need rich people. We don't need rich people to make their money off government inside deals. Oh, whatever. You're just with Trump. And I said, are you with Hillary? No, but I, and I said, oh, let me guess, you're Ted Cruz. Well, yeah. You're like a Pharisee that Christ talked about who's just so holier than thou when that guy's a Goldman Sachs minion. It, it's just, it's crazy. And I've had that the last week. Two different people on the street go, Alex, I'm ashamed of you. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not ashamed of you. I'm sad for you. I am so proud of the people out there that support liberty, that have been awake and involved for so long, that it can see that Trump is making a real go at bringing down the new world order and is doing so many amazing things and has such incredible courage to lose hundreds of millions of dollars in different contracts and TV contracts and entertainment contracts and have his family attacked and go through so much hell. In fact, I did, I'm putting you on the spot. Can you, uh, I'm getting neurotic about having to read this every week. Can you guys pull up Teddy Roosevelt's uh, In the Arena poem, please, when he left office? Because the In the Arena says it all. And I, I was thinking about trying to shoot a special video talking about all the great things Trump's done I mean, talking about the Clinton death count, talking about the open borders, talking about one-sided trade deals, talking about carbon taxes being a fraud, talking about ISIS and Al-Qaeda being run by the globalists, talking about vaccines being dangerous, and you should check into it for yourself, uh, talking about election fraud, talking about everything he does is to expose the new world order. And Donald Trump, here's the key to everything. Donald Trump thinks you're smart enough to hear complex thoughts. Donald Trump thinks you're complex enough and smart enough to hear the real truth, and he believes you're going to do something about it and be able to change them. Now, you are going to prove Donald Trump right or wrong. But I'll tell you this, these polls are as phony as a $3 bill or as Obamacare being free. They admit they're fake. Donald Trump's going to win in a landslide unless they steal it. He's preparing to fight it. That's coming up in the next segment. But first, getting back to this quote. They've got it on screen. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by the dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, 
because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who is at best, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his shall never be the place, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who know victory nor defeat. All right, we're going to come back, get into the situation in Milwaukee. The big liberal socialist enclave of happy socialism. And it's all going to hell. That's where George Soros targets. We'll be back. And the empire is running people like George Soros, insider globalists, establishing a world government based on social justice warrior disinformation garbage. Now, coming up in the last segment of this broadcast, we have a very special report where Donald Trump is calling for you to help him and help yourself fight back against election fraud. The video is on Infowars.com. We just posted it. Please spread it to everyone you know. Donald Trump asked Americans to help him fight a rigged election. He's actually organizing through the campaign now. You sign up, tell them where you're at. They tell you by law with an observer how far back to be to do exit polls. Exit polls have been shown to be incredibly accurate. This is history happening. That's coming up in the last segment. Then I'll be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We'll be taking calls. Got a bunch of big guests, you name it. I didn't take calls today because we've got riots in Milwaukee, burning buildings, police cars. We've got all this major news. We've got our Secret Service news. That Hillary Clinton does have a neurological disorder and it's getting much worse and she's trying to cover it up. It's crazy. But first, going to Milwaukee, even the Associated Press, as the establishment admits, this guy was a convicted felon, robber, running around, waving a gun at police. I mean, you wave a gun at me, I'm going to shoot you. Just, I don't care if you're white, black, what color you are. And again, they know that we're inherently liberal as Americans. They know that. By liberal, I mean we, we, we don't hate people for what color they are. So they play on our heartstrings like this. It's funny that David Clark's been critical of Obama saying he's a cop hater last week, and now this is happening there. But it's all just part of the climate in general. So there's a few of these clips with people running around saying loot cars, attack the white people. We bleep this. There's more than 15 videos on Infowars.com. We've got two. We've had time to, to bleep, so here's one of them. There's a white cracker, get him. Start attacking on me, I don't care what color you are, you're gonna be a problem. They dropped it every white person. Man, that white person come down Sherman. Here comes a white person down Sherman. He white, get him. He white, get him. This is KKK level, man. This is dumb down racist filth. He white, get him, he white. Hey, look, hey, look, get him. And by the way, people say, oh, that's racist to make fun of his inner city voice. It was a white guy. Let's kill them black people. Hey, look, get him. They beat up every. They made the squad cars leave. <laughs> well, this is a good thing. I never been stopped one of these things. Look, 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 bro, look. Oh, look, beating up that white cracker head. Oh, my God, look. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Beat up that cracker head. Who they just beat up, bro? Now, see, this ain't on the clip. I think they just beat some for no reason they bust her window and everything oh they just beat up a white person for no reason now she's like oh she 
They just beat up a white person for no reason. It's like as if some white person driving down the highway was out to get you. The, the average white person is this guilt-ridden person that hates themselves. That's what's so crazy is this is going to recruit white people to actually be racist. It's all engineered. you, you got to really thank Obama and George Soros and the globalists for this. We've got one more of these clips. we actually got a bunch more of these clips. Uh, let's go ahead and roll this one. This is from Milwaukee. Because some guy waving a gun at police got shot. Here it is. Bill Black Power in this man. Yay! I love how the police train with guns all day long. You think you're just going to wave a gun at them? <laughs> this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Here they are yelling Black Power, robbing people's vehicles. No, they ain't chosen. And again, ignorant, dumb people are racially based. It's tribalism. Whites do it, blacks do it. The thing is, the media has advertised it for blacks to do as a good thing. To create division. Now that car's on fire. And then create this breakdown of society. They use Muslims in Europe. They create minority manipulations here in the U.S. They've tried to organize Mexicans into all this. Mexicans, on average, don't do this. It's just a societal fact. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wow, we really shut everyone. We drugged some white people out of cars and burned them. This is how sick society has gotten as a whole. And the videos uncensored are on Infowars.com. We're on a lot of broadcast. TV and radio stations, cable systems, we cannot air profanity here, and I don't want to anyways, but you want to see it uncensored, it's at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com right now. There's a lot of censorship going on. We're going to be covering it throughout the week, but the, the, this other clip, Black Lives Matter supporter, rich people don't give us enough money, so we burn down our neighborhoods. Do we have a chance to bleep this one yet? We haven't gotten to that. I know we have a skeleton crew. And when you got dozens of videos, I don't know how you could get to them. I watched that this morning, and I was like, what? what? This is a quote. Rich people don't give us enough money, so we burn down our neighborhoods. That's written like a joke. That's a quote. I saw that this morning. By the way, this guy is like a Black Lives Matter leader who's been on TV. <laughs> Look what George Soros does. He gives a crazy dumbass like this guy a platform on TV, and then he goes out and he says, rich people don't give us enough money, so we burn down our neighborhood. It'd be bad enough to say rich people don't give us money, so we burn down their neighborhoods. It's like, you don't give me any money, so I shoot myself in the head. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, I don't mean to be involved in unintentional comedy, but this stuff's getting rich. As they burn down their own neighborhoods. And I just feel sorry for these people. It's just like trendies out there. It, 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 it. All right, I, video, Black Lives Matter riders target whites for beatdowns. They were, quote, hunting whites in the streets. They're beating up all the white people is the quote. And I love how they do it in Milwaukee and other liberal areas because, I mean, just a news flash. I pull up to a checkpoint. It's the police with a car wreck or police doing something. My gun's under the deal. I pull up a checkpoint. You're burning cars, attacking people. I'm going to try to turn around and go over the medium. If I'm blocked, I'm going to get out and say, stand down right now. The minute you don't stand down, I'm defending my family. And I'm not looking for trouble, but I just see this type of stuff. And there's a, we all know why you don't do it in places like Texas. You saw what happened to ISIS when they tried their crap up in Garland. And sure, there'll be some cases where you can go shoot some people in the back, like Dallas, like cowards, and get away with it. But in the final equation, you're going to get your ass kicked. And I don't mean black people. I don't have a score to settle with black people. I want everybody to be free in an open, good society. But stuff is getting crazy. And it's so racially based, and it's all run by these wicked globalists that have pulled this different stuff in different countries, and it's so frustrating. We're going to go to break, come back, and introduce the final big piece where Donald Trump calls for you to support uh, DonaldJTrump.com, his campaign website, Trump Pence. 
You can go sign up right there to be poll watchers. They'll give you advisors how to do it legally and lawfully and give you the credentials to do it. This is a big deal. I'm going to be doing it myself coming up November 7th and 8th. Poll watchers and exit pollers. So that's all coming up straight ahead. We've got big specials that end today. 50% off of colloidal silver, 40% off on Anthroplex, 33% off of solar panel, control systems, solar panels, at InfoWarsStore.com. I am very thankful that I was born in America and that I'm a Texan. I'm very thankful for this crew. I'm very thankful for my mama. And I'm very thankful for Donald Trump. Go to DonaldJTrump.com. You can navigate through and find where he wants you to volunteer to be an election poll watcher and exit poller. But we're going to tweet it out at Real Alex Jones and Facebook because it's a long URL coming up. Or you can find it at DonaldJTrump.com. I'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central with a weekday transmission on stations all over this country. Please support those affiliates. Right now, though, let's go ahead and go to this special report where Donald Trump asks you to stand up for the integrity of our elections. Why is the establishment so scared of Donald Trump? Because they know he's a maverick. They know he operates on his own. They know that he's gone up against the establishment and not let them basically squeeze him in business deals. They know that he understands we've got a lot of one-sided trade deals with China and other nations. And you've got this political class of insiders that don't want us to actually have a president that represents us. They're globalist. And Trump isn't, quote, getting his information from Alex Jones. Trump was there during the primaries when he was winning states by 78 percent like California. And they were announcing that they were going to take all the delegates from him. Or in Colorado, they just suspended the election. In other states, like Louisiana, he would win, and they would give the delegates to Ted Cruz. Then the media spun it like he was being a sore loser, because despite the fact he was winning the popular vote, the Republican Party was saying no. Trump stood up to that. The RNC was forced to back down, and the voters' will and the law was followed, not the Republican rules. And so Trump, again, doesn't care if the mainstream media criticizes him and laughs at him and makes fun of him. He's coming out and saying, we have a lot of evidence of retail voter fraud and preparations for election fraud. And Trump has been talking about California and Illinois and others that have had bills that have even gotten to the governor's desk to let illegals who've been off the plane one day vote. But then they look at Trump and go, oh, we're not involved in any election fraud or retail fraud. We're not going out and getting illegals registered to vote, even though Project Veritas and others are able to do it all the time on video. Our investigative journalists have documented how easy it is, even in a state like Texas that has more controls. So the Democratic Party is over here trying to legalize illegals voting. And there's evidence of it all over the country going on in past elections or dead people voting, or Democratic operatives voting multiple times, but they want to tell you that's not going on, even though it's admitted that Kennedy, back in 1960, stole Illinois. Now, I'm going to get into some of the history of election fraud and also voter fraud here in a moment and talk about how the Democrats and the media are ridiculous, claiming they don't know what it is when it's historic, and anybody with an IQ above 70 knows about it. But first, I want to give you the good news. Trump has heard our call. He's heard your call. He knows the history of fraud. He knows how they tried to steal the primaries from him. And they did steal it from Bernie Sanders, unfortunately. So Donald Trump is announcing on his official website an area for people to organize and get ready to be poll watchers and to also be exit pollers to document who's actually voting for who. Because here's the big secret. Donald Trump is doing his own internal polling with some of the top bipartisan pollers in the country. He wants real polls, not spin polls where Reuters samples 15 percent more Democrats to claim Hillary 15 points ahead. I mean, this is ridiculous. There's all sorts of fraud. They're gaming Google. They're not listing him as a presidential candidate. Uh, they're trying to rig the debates. I mean, we've seen the incredible scams and Trump's not going along with it. He is up front calling it out, calling for local law enforcement to watch for it, calling for poll watchers to watch, and calling for exit polls, which have historically been 3 to 5% uh, margin of error, which is incredibly accurate. So he's announcing, hey, 
I've got my own internal polling showing I'm ahead in Ohio by seven points, showing I'm ahead in Pennsylvania by about 10 points, showing I'm ahead in Florida in some internal polls by 15. And these are real random polls showing in some polls Trump is three points ahead in California, margin of error, dead heat. Instead, the Democrats are so arrogant, they're claiming with their fake polls, he's going to lose Georgia. He's going to lose Texas. He's going to lose Utah. He, uh, ladies and gentlemen, internal polls, not just by the Trump campaign, but by other major institutions, show Trump on average seven points ahead in basically uh, California strongholds for the Democrats. New York. That's why they are crapping their pants. If Trump was so far behind in all these so-called polls, when just two weeks ago he was 10 points ahead before they changed the methodology, why would they be panicking and saying he's dropping out and saying his wife's a prostitute and saying she's an illegal alien and all this crap they've made up? They're doing it because they're panicking, because it's hard to steal a landslide election. And they know Trump is aware of the fact that the AP and five other media outlets called California for Sanders a day before the election even had. And it's this shadowy voter pool organization that will nationally try to put out the fake numbers coming up on November 8th. This is an incredible time to be alive because Donald Trump isn't one of these mummies like John McCain or Mitt Romney that's going to sit there and take a stolen election. In fact, it was in 2012 that Trump came out and said, there's no way, I've talked to my political experts that Mitt Romney lost this. McCain was hated in 2008. Obama was the Messiah, was probably elected by even bigger numbers than we saw. A lot of evidence there was some cheating against him. Four years later, Obama in 2012 was very unpopular. There were 8 million more voters in 2012 than there were in 2008. But Mitt Romney got less votes than John McCain did. And guess what Donald Trump called? He called BS. Bravo Sierra. Because that's what it is. They admit the stock market's rigged now. They admit that the interest rates are rigged. They admit the currency rates are rigged. They admit all this stuff's rigged by insiders now. And these globalists are stealing elections all over the world. In some areas, Goldman Sachs is putting its, its corporate executives in, 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 in Italy and in uh, places like Greece without even having an election and going, it's okay, we install leaders now. And then here comes Donald Trump saying, excuse me, excuse me, we've been doing our own polling and we're way ahead in all these states. And so if there's hanky-panky, something went on here. But I don't just believe Donald Trump. I've gone and looked at the methodology, you should too, of all these polls you see. Sometimes you had to go five, six pages back clicking to find their so-called methodology. And you're going to see the frauds they're engaged in. They're calling old phone numbers of known Democratic voters. They're calling independents in the vote independents when they're really Democrats. They're, they're sampling 10 to 15 points more of Democrats in the overall poll to skew it. This is so obvious. They think we're stupid. But here's the good news. We're not. Good liberals, real liberals like Julian Assange, who actually have the hacked emails, document that they stole the election from Sanders and are planning it for Trump and more is about to come out. The truth is, the whole world sees the evil that's grown here in the US. And as bad as the Republican Party is, that's allied with the Democrats, the world sees that it's the Democratic Party that's really running the corrupt combine that's hijacked this nation. And the world, not just Americans, are standing up and speaking out. My final statement is this. Donald Trump has had the courage to tell the truth, the courage to not let them steal the Republican nomination from him and the American people. And now he sees evidence of fraud in these national polls compared to scientific polls that he and others are having conducted. And he's saying we need to watch this and that he needs us in battleground states. There's 10 of them, at least, arguably 12 to be involved and to organize with the Trump campaign to legally and lawfully, at a proper distance, conduct exit polls so that we can actually document what's happening. And don't forget, we've got the Democrats trying to legalize illegals voting and trying to pass laws where there's no ID. Most states don't make you have an ID so they can engage in this fraud. 
Trump is absolutely right that we should always be vigilant about our elections. We should always be vigilant about our government. Our founders told us over and over again that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. And anyone that tells us not to be vigilant needs to be looked at very, very closely. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com. If you're watching or listening to this transmission, you are the resistance, you are the patriots, you are the answer. No matter what race, color, creed, or religion you are, you bleed red blood, and you love freedom, and you love justice. And Donald Trump is our general. We are modern Paul Revere's, and it's time to get out there and be involved. I intend to be a poll watcher myself, and I intend to be out there doing exit polls. My patriotic duty. And until tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central, I bid thee farewell and good tidings. From Alex Jones, the rest of the InfoWars.com crew, we love you.